This morning I got up at quarter to six uh, to, uh, to the baby and uh, trying to change a nappy with a one-year-old one that doesn't want the nappy changed uh, kind of gives you a perspective on things. So. <laughs> Scotswoman Catherine Styler has been an MEP for 13 years and a mother for six. Finding time for both is a tricky juggling act between family and work, especially when her titles don't end there. I've served as Deputy Leader of the European Parliamentary Labour Party, as Editor of the Parliament Magazine, and been Labour's European Spokesperson on Fisheries, Health, Regional Policy, and more recently on the Internal Market and Consumer Protection Committee. It is her interest in consumer affairs and health that led to this meeting with Dr. Peter Rice, an expert in alcoholism. Scotland wants a minimum price for alcohol. The EU has said this could contravene its single market rules. Catherine hopes to raise some of Dr. Rice's concerns back in Brussels. Every country in Europe has problems with alcohol. Europe is the, most, is the, is the heaviest drinking part of the world. And with that consumption come a lot of problems. Our real worry in Scotland was that we saw a big, big increases in rates of harm. Really since the, the early 1980s we've seen big changes, the number of people dying. Today, Catherine has politician in training 16-year-old Omar in tow. A student at Dollar Academy, he's looking to learn the political ropes from a pro. She gave me an opportunity to follow her for a day as work experience, see what I can learn about members of the European Parliament. And what better way to learn than being thrown in at the deep end? <laughs> Scotland's top financial movers and shakers gathered in Edinburgh's Merchants Hall to hear Catherine talk about a subject close to their hearts, money. On the Parliament's Economic Committee, she has the inside knowledge on new regulations that may affect their work. Hoping to win over potential Eurosceptics with a touch of patriotism, she pays homage to Scotland's patron saint on the National Day. To have strong connections to St Andrew. I went to university at St Andrews, I was married at the university chapel in St Andrews, my one-year-old son is called Andrew and if I had been a man I would have been called Andrew. Catherine is the only female Scottish MEP. Though the European Parliament counts more women politicians than most member states, the fight for gender equality continues. Well, I think generally um, we should have more women in politics and I think Catherine's a great example of someone who can really make it work but um, it is a very challenging environment um, I think the the men that that audience this morning was largely made up of men it must have been well over 90% men in fact I can't even remember seeing any other women in the audience um, well there are three right well that's still not good not only concerned with finance, consumer and gender issues, in the European Parliament she's been extremely active on the anti-smoking campaign and in promoting Scotland's internationalism. Friday, the afternoon is reserved for driving home to her children. Her two lives clearly separated by the Firth of Forth. Morning meetings in Edinburgh and the evening with her family in Dunfermline. Just now, I always try and make sure that I can collect Andrew from nursery and Alex um, to be picked up from school. And that's the kind of thing I try, because you don't get it back. Naming her one-year-old Andrew after Scotland's patron saint may please patriots, but nationalists don't share her opinions on Scottish independence. I feel that we're stronger as part of the United Kingdom and I'll be campaigning with the Better Together campaign, which is showing that, you know, there's clear advantages of us being part of the, of the United Kingdom. Scotland's independence would pose a conundrum for the EU membership process. Both the next European elections and the referendum are coming up in 2014, so Catherine will have her work cut out for her. But for now, she can reap the benefits of being a mother. I'm very, very fortunate that I can have the balance between having a family life and having... Because, you know, it is a family after all that makes, I think, life worthwhile. I think sometimes people in politics become so almost institutionalised that it makes it hard to see kind of the wood from the trees.